Back again. Napoleon's last gamble OSG games. The quest for bra scenario. Learning scenario for me. Uh, let's see. Status is French driving up. Ney and his Riley's core are driving up the road towards Quatre Bra. Their big success was taking the chateau here successfully with a shock attack. Five victory points, but more importantly, opens the road up to Quatre Bra, which every turn that goes by, it's one less victory point. <coughs> Coalition's doing the best they can to uh, reinforce Quatre Bra as much as possible. Um, two infantry, two artillery, Picton's there under Wellington uh, right now. <coughs> All I could do is put screens on the flank here. Um, <coughs> these units are finally moving up. We've got cavalry coming up from over here. And then next turn, we'll get some reinforcements here. So this is the start of the 4 p.m. turn for the French. No reinforcements. <coughs> Excuse me, I don't I only do this when I'm recording for some reason. Uh, let's see. So the defense here is fourteen. The problem with Quatre Bras over that chateau is well, there's really nothing here. There is a slope hex here, which we could if attacked only uphill through slope hex sides. I have not figured this out, actually. But my best shot looking here is when you look at a slope hex, it says defender only benefits if on a hilltop and attacked from adjacent slope hex. Hilltop hex looks like a hex completely surrounded by slopes. This is not a hilltop hex. This is interesting. There's some kind of crest going on here. But I'm going to go ahead and just assume there's no slope modifier. Um, somebody is watching this and knows better. Please let me know. So the next step is look at this and we get into the traditional counter, I mean, counting f um, factors here. So assume no defensive modifiers. That's 14. And if we look at all of these units, 4 and 1 is 5 going to leave the 3-4 out for now. That's 11, 12, 18, 25, 25 and 9, 25, 27, 32, 36, 40. So with 14, I need to get to 42. So this is the key right here. I had 40, so I could throw the 3-4 in. The reason I'm not is this unit has to be attacked in some form. Can't use artillery against him because he's in the woods. So this implies some kind of ground soak off. I can't even, well I could use the that artillery unit and move it up. Let's see, but if I can get this guy, one, two, three, four, five, six, that will put me over the top, but again this is all about one, two, three, four. One hex short of nay. Nay's probably going to have to do this guy. So again, it's Kellerman. Will Kellerman come up and command, or will he dawdle again? So with that being said, let's look at the sequence of play. Uh, weather segment doesn't apply. None of these applies. Uh, we basically, oh wait, the command segment. That's the first thing that hits us here. We're doing the French. Nay, uh, activates Riley, which then um, pretty much, yeah, all of these units are second core, which is Riley. The only unique unit is this unit, who's third cavalry core. You just have to look at the symbols here. So Nay can command him. So all of these units are in command. It's all about Kellerman now. So let's roll 1d6, and I'm going to close my eyes. I can't find it. Gee, Manetti. <laughs> Excuse my Bugs Bunny there. He did it again. Kellerman is unreliable. So the only units the French have here are these units. So 
Um, let me reconsider here. All right, two options are to accept the two to one. Um, it'll be a combined arms attack ultimately, so it'll go to three to one. Which, if then we look at the CRT, there is the possibility for a shock. Um, and we will get the plus one, but because it's three to one, but they do have four initiative units and we have four initiative units. So if we jack it up to four to one, um, then our worst case scenario is a six and an exchange. Um, so to pull this off, uh, I'm just running the numbers here, I've got to have somebody attack this guy. Uh, and the only one I can use is this artillery costs four to move there. Gonna have horrible odds um, because they're also they lose in the woods artillery's half so this would be the lowest one to whatever but I mean in a sense it's it's like I'm bombarding but from adjacent and uh, again I'm pretty sure the rules didn't say anything about artillery can't attack infantry uh, dead on so the next problem I have is stacking. I have three effective hexes here. Um, the cavalry cannot go in the woods because then their effectiveness is reduced too. So I'm going to just start moving units and see if I can fit them in here. I got one here. And this guy will go here. So that positions my cavalry. If I look at the event table, okay, this hex, I can only put two combat units because I intend to put Riley here and Ney here, and they'll get the five stacking, two infantry plus three more. So what I'm going to do is two, three. Yep, gonna move these guys here and these guys here. That hex is totally stacked now. Now the good news is I got two infantry here and I have two infantry here. And I've got the cavalry here, so I think I'll be okay. The 6-4 moves here, the 7-4 moves here, and then the 4-4 four, four moves here, and the 5-4 moves here. Okay, and now we still got a lot of artillery. One, two, three, four. But each of these are stacked at three, and I'm allowed five with leaders, so I can do this, and I can do this, and then I do this, and I do this. Ah, oh, Kellerman, what are we going to do with you? It would have made it a little bit easier. So let's check stacking. Two combat units, no leader. Uh, stacking limits for leader. Five combat units, of which two may be infantry. Three of the same division. I don't have that problem. So we do see here two infantry and then two artillery and a cavalry. And then here we have two infantry, two artillery, and a cavalry. So that's all good. So I'm going to remove the moves. And this is the big attack. So this one will be at <coughs> one to six. And I'm going to make another assumption that I'm allowed to make um, less than one to six attacks. Let's find the combat chart. Attacks worse than five, 1 to 5 are treated as 1 to 5. All right, so we're at 1 to 5. Good chance you're going to get eliminated. Um, I don't think the woods help them either. But let's make sure the numbers here are right. 8, 18, 25, 27. 35, 42. Exactly. And that's 14. And 14 times 3 is 30 plus 12, 42. So, yes, exactly 4 to 1. But hoping for a retreat for this guy. <coughs> so, which one do I want to do first? Well, I'm going to do this one first for sure. So, we've got a straight 4 to 1. Well, let's come over to the sequence play, make sure I didn't miss anything here, since we're supposed to be learning. Combat phase, line of sight, cavalry retreat, 
No, nobody's retreating. Uh, all the artillery is adjacent now. All the coalition artillery is adjacent, so they can't do any kind of battery fire. Same for the French. No battery fire. Uh, no cavalry charge. I, I did look at that briefly. They have to be stacked, and I only got one four six. And maybe he could have charged this guy, but not. needed him for the big assault. So maybe we'll see cavalry charge in another one. So now we do the attack. Okay. Now the one thing in the French favor. Um, again, I'm interpreting this as no defensive modifier for the terrain. And if we look at the combat results table, uh, that's not it. But we do get combined arms. Let's see if it's here. Well, I know we do. Um, we've got artillery, cavalry, <coughs> and infantry. So combined arms, that gets us a plus one. So we did get three to one. Now we're at four to one. So here it is, the big attack on Quatre Bras. 4 to 1, 2. That's a nice result for the DR4. Wow. All right, so they have to retreat four hexes. And it has to be a straight retreat. And the path of retreat, according to the rules, um, should shorten the distance to the formation's baggage train or to a friendly supply source. And pick better terrain. Um, well, here it is right here. It's. Uh, that's their supply source. One, two, three, four. Just kind of go around these guys, prevent disruption. So if I'm reading this right, um, all of these units. One, two, three, four. Wow, that's uh, that's quite a push there. And we also have one other thing that's going on here. I'm interpreting this right. Leaders. Uh, earlier we had a leader by itself and we had to roll on a table. But there is also a 1 in 6 chance if a leader retreats. Leader stack with friendly common units can always retreat with their stack. Every leader in a retreating stack is subject to a separate die roll. 1 to 5, then it's fine. 6 captured and immediately removed from play. Um, yeah, and then a replacement officer for core, but if Wellington's captured, who knows? Wow, this is not good for the coalition. So, let's roll for Wellington. Whew, dodge that bullet. Picton, dodge that bullet. <laughs> so, I guess with a five, it looks like they barely escaped capture. Okay, so that's done. Now, all that the French can do is advance after combat, but properly set up this time, uh, all the units with a leader can advance after combat. So that means, uh, in this case, I'm going to advance Riley and all his units. Okay? So, a uh, really successful attack here. The French are. They are hard to resist. They went through the chateau, and then they've pushed Wellington back enough to make him run four hexes. So at this point, it'd be interesting what the strategy of the coalition is now that Quatre Bras has fallen. Um, maybe stay on the board. Maybe this is not the ideal direction to retreat in this game, this scenario, because you don't have a lot of space. Um, you could retreat backwards up of this road. Uh, there's not enough around. If this was a campaign game, we'd have a better understanding of the terrain up here. But, either way, so they're done. So the next thing we have to do is this one, the suicide attack by the uh, by the artillery. Which, in hindsight, I didn't have to do, because if I had done a 3-to-1 and rolled a 2, well, I would have had a DR2. Uh, that's a bit more exciting. They're just going to move back up, though. So here we go. This is a 1 to 5. And I can tell no modifiers. Um, look at Woods here. Change AR result to shock. No combined arms attack, no bombardment. So an AR goes to shock. Well, we'll see. 
I don't know. We'll roll that here. So 1 to 5, need a 1 or a 2 to live. The rest, it dies. Or it goes to that table. 3. Alright, well, then this unit is destroyed. So the French have got their first losses here. Um, this unit could be reorganized at night. There's got plenty of a retreat path. But it did its role. So at this point, um, let's look at the turn chart. And they've got reinforcements coming down the road. Uh, I'm going to have to review the victory points again to see what... With these two hexes gone, and I don't think the coalition is strong enough to retake this hex, uh, what their strategy will be at this point. So, thanks for watching. Successful French storming of Quatre Bras, sending Wellington down the road. Uh, we'll come back next turn, next phase, and we'll have developed a coalition strategy for the rest of the game because actually there's quite a few more turns here. And they will get stronger, but the question is where are they going to defend? Now that looks interesting. But then do the French have any reason to pursue them? In real life, yes. Uh, so, sounds good. So 16 minutes, good point to break, and we'll catch you at the next recording.